All right, BB. Today we're going to do a walking tour in historic Dade City, and it's a 1.1 mile. Okay. With over 35 historic sites. All right, let's get started. You can get the map right here at the Greater Dade City. And this is the first stop, mm -hmm. which was what? Beginning tour, beginning tour by walking east on Church Avenue to 7th Street and turn to walk north. This is the very first one, the Greater Dade City Chamber of Commerce. Yep, and it used to be the property donated by the South Trust Bank. Mm -hmm. All right, and right next to the Chamber of Commerce, this is supposed to be the old telephone building. <laughs> Constructed in 1924 in the Meridian Revival style by the Florida Telephone Company. For many years it was housed, it housed switchboards and offices. Okay. Now to number three. Alright, BB, as we head down the alley to 7th Street, we're going to number three. The Williams Building is number three on the map, built in 1926 as a clothing store and continues to this day as a clothing store and restaurant helmed by the descendant of O.N. Williams. Just a note here before we do the old courthouse. Pasco County was created from Hernando County on May 12, 1887. The area was first inhabited by Muskegee Indians and the first white man in the area came with Spanish explorer Panfilo de Navarres in May 1528. Navarres fought the Indians near the Withlacoochee River before moving northward. Few white settlers were in the area until the 1840s. It is the home of the St. Leo College and is noted for citrus naval stores. Hi BB number four is this building. This is our historic Pasco County Courthouse. Constructed in 1909, it was the county seat of government for Pasco County for more than 50 years. And originally built at the cost of $35,860. Golly. Yep, and that's it right there, guys. And, but no, this has been remodeled since, oh, the last, 20 years they've remodeled this one the inside still has the hardwood floorings and stuff but the outside has been remodeled a little bit okay. Will Fargo's bank is number five on the list one of the cornerstones and revela revelations of downtown Date City it is a faithful recreation of the original Bank of Pasco County when the crash of 1929 arrived, 
every bank in the county was forced to close except the Bank of Pasco County. So that's it right there. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, number six on the map is, is that building in the corner. Yeah, right there in the corner, the black and white one. For many years, it was known as Quilts on Plum Lane, okay? This building was constructed of brick in 1919 and originally called the Bank of Dade City, which closed with the collapse of the Florida boom in 1926. Up until recently, it's always been known as Quilts on Plum Lane. Um, recently, it's been changed over to a new business. So, but for years, as growing up as a little girl, it's all we've always known that as the quilting store. All right, so number seven is the Centennial Building. Which is behind you. Which is behind me right there. Formerly the old Coleman and Ferguson building in 1923 and remodeled in 1987. It housed one of the city's leading general stores. All right, number eight on the map is the Griffin Block Building. Constructed in 1905, it was originally Griffin Drugstore. The building in the middle is the Trebor Building. Constructed about 1900 as a hardware store and offices, it is the oldest commercial building in Pasco County. And where you see its keepers, Village Jewels, was Touchton's building. On the southwest corner of 7th and Meridian Avenue, it was constructed in 1908, originally as a drugstore and office. It houses keepers, jewelers, Village Jewelers now. Right, so that's number 10, okay. Number 11 on the map is Edwinola. It says, as you walk past Agnes Land Park, which is in front of us. Where the Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. The original front part of Edwinola Hotel was constructed in 1912 as a fashionable hotel. Today, it is now an assistant living facility. Okay, number 12 on the walking list is the Lock Home. It's at the top of the hill. This home was formerly known as the Azalea House Bed and Breakfast and originally constructed in 1906 as the home of Christopher and Lucy Lock, permanent residents of the period. This home incorporates an earlier 1890s building which was transported from Lake Pasadena by mules. Wow. And they're remodeling it right now. They're restoring it, yes. Yep, let me see if I can get the front here for you guys. And it's always been beautiful. Yeah. And that's the front, guys. Mm-hmm. Okay. Number 13 on the map is the Haiti Spencer home. Haiti Spencer was the Dade City's postmistress from 1890, or 1897 to 1936. And I'm just gonna come around here so you guys get a better view of the side uh, and of it. Permanent attorneys lived here for many, many years. Huh? Who grew up here? Who? Mr. Dayton grew up here. Mr. Dayton? He was an attorney here, yes. Uh, and that's it right there. You get a, a view of the side of the house. It's hard to get because there's a lot of trees, but it's here. Okay, number 14 on the list. Penholster Home. As you continue walking past the lovely Price Park on your right, and south this is the Price Park here, guys. Yes. Newly remodeled, tennis yes. court and everything. Everything for the public. Yes. All right. Stop and enjoy two homes on either side of Meridian Avenue. On the left is the Penholster home, which originally con constructed in 1898 with a lovely gingerbread porch. That's what they call a gingerbread porch. Gotcha. All right. Number 15 on the map is Dagger and Jackson. The lovely Doric columns on the right were constructed in 1910, once the home of Dade City surgeon Dr. Thomas Jackson. Wow, that's beautiful. Basically, those two houses own this block, side of this block. Yeah, that's when you bought a house for property. Yes, yes. Or you bought property and you built a house on yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah. And we're on Meridian Avenue, guys. 
Number 16 is the Meridian Apartments. On the corner of 12th Street and Meridian Avenue is Meridian Apartment. Built in the 1920s, this is an example of Florida boom agriculture. Architecture, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> we ain't perfect. But yeah, there's apartments you can come up in the back. I always loved these. Even when I was a kid, I was like, oh, that's so pretty. I'm gonna just get you a little bit of the front of it, guys. And like I said, the four ones here, you come through here, and then the rest of the apartments you go to the back. Right. Number 17 is the Boone Shea home. Built in 1900, it was the long time resident of J. Itmit Evans, a former Date City citrus grower. And if anybody around Day City remembers Evans, they own 90% of our groves that we had our citrus groves. And the front faces sideways. Now, as you see, we're getting to the to the roads that are brick. That's original. Yes. That's and one they thing. Keep these. They if the bricks go bad, they, they just, replace the bricks. Yeah. Because this is the historic part of downtown Date City. Yeah, and then that's the side. So they own a lot here. I thought that was a cat, but it was a cat. Now, this is all still part of that house that we just said. Mm -hmm. They own that, that. And this property just goes. Yeah. This is here. Okay, everybody. This is number 18. This is the Sis Truck Home. Built in the 1890s in a plantation style, Dr. Sis Truck was one of Date City's pioneer doctors. And let me tell you, I have seen this house as a little girl and always loved this house. They, For a while, it was fallen in disrepair and the new owners that have it now have spent years restoring it to its original form. I don't know what the inside is, but I know the outside looks I, just as beautiful as it did when I was a little girl. And they own literally that green everything, everything. on this corner. We're going to try to get, uh, I don't know what would be considered the front because this whole thing is the front. Got doors everywhere. And this is on Church Avenue, which is historic Day street. Day. Right. That's yeah, literally part of the historic downtown Date City. But this yeah, look at that. This has always been a beautiful, beautiful home. And they keep it up too, lit up Christmas time. Oh, this house is magnificent. They have it so decorated for Christmas. Yeah. And I, they always kept the wooden fence just the way it was when I was a little girl. And these here too. Yep, we're sitting out. Yep. It's just gorgeous. And they own that lot there, so they're building a house. They're building a house there or something, but they own this whole corner. Yes, they do. They do. Alrighty. Alright guys, number 19 on the map is the first Presbyterian Church. Built in the early 1890s, it is the oldest intact church building in Date City. And it's the first Presbyterian Church. That is beautiful. And it's so beautiful at Christmas time. Yeah, when they have the Church Street Christmas, you'll see our videos. These this places, is the street. Yeah, these places are so, they're so traditional. They keep everything traditional with lights and, and church music. It's just beautiful. Yeah, this is where they close the street down. Uh, All the way up there. Yeah, up there, because that's literally, if you figure back in the time, which we're going to read that there, this was Dade City, just street here. Church Street was Dade City. Was the the main living area of it, right? Of Dade City. Yeah. This, this was town. Right. And then you had the little stores right. that we went over there that like we were showing you in downtown, stores, the courthouses. Yes. Right. But this was living Back in Dade in the City. 1800s. If you owned a farm out in Orange Grove, you were out by Blanton, the farthest of Dade or City, Santa which is Anne. country land. Right. Yeah, or San Ann. Okay, number 20 on the map. This is Dr. Jackson's Clinic. Built in 1922 to 23, it was a two-room hospital until 1935. 
now turn around the back side to Church Avenue and 5th Street. Hmm. Wow. So this was our very first hospital with two rooms. Yeah. But I wonder what it means now turned around. I wonder if the entrance was up there. Maybe. And then, now the entrance is here. Yeah. All right. On forward. All right. Church Street. Historic District. Church Street, so named because of its churches, developed as a residential area in the 1880s. As Dade City grew from the isolated frontier settlement to a railroad town and county seat in the 1890 first Presbyterian retains its original style at the southwest corner of church and college now 14th street central florida normal college shared buildings with pasco high school then the only public high school in the county in 1893 church avenue from 8th street to fort king road was registered and historic district because of its many examples of the turn of architecture. Okay, everybody. 21 on the map is the Raymond Brown home. Built in 1887, it features Victorian gingerbread trim and a wraparound porch. There it is. They up to there. So now, if anyone ever wanted to know what that trim what's called now you know it's the gingerbread trim sweet and this is the side of that house and look at that beautiful and back here back in the day you own the whole block you did not I mean, just get a house next to each other you owned you owned a good half acre yeah yeah, yeah. okay or more Okay, number 22 on our map is the First Baptist Church. Formerly, formerly College Street Baptist Church, Congression organized in 1891. The church was built here in 1892. The first structure burned down in 1899, but it's still on the same site. Right, and they were talking about how when they, you see that round, thing the porch that that's what you would see a lot in that period yeah of time so that's how you can tell a lot yeah. of what year you know in the 1800s right. yeah. but if you see a lot of houses they have that round porch with the pillars colonial right that's that's what would be is to say you have money you know people right. with money had that so that's a status right. back then anybody who had pillars like the house across the street right oh yeah yeah this is yeah yep you it was a symbol of status mm -hmm. so that's why when you see the white house that's what you you see it it yeah. has that on there all right let's continue all righty here we go All right, number 23 on our map is the Knight Home. Which is the corner. Which is this corner right here. Um, it is a Dutch colonial style home with a gamb gambrel roof built in 1901. Now the one next to it? That one is the Tipton Home, constructed in 1918. Wow. And the good thing is they're they're just trying to maintain it. They are. All right, number 25 on the list, everybody, is the Ward Johnson home. Built by a noted local contractor, Joan, Jones Ward, in 1925 to 26. So it took him a year to build his home. Wow, and it goes back here as well. So now we're moving up into the times houses are being built faster. Okay, number 26 on the map is home built in 1940s. Neighboring to the left of the Ward home, that would be this one. So you can see where the bricks are starting to come into play. So it's not just a wooden strain structure anymore. 
Nice. Number 28 on the map is the Ross Larkin home. Built in 1881, was originally a typical Florida structure of three rooms with a hall in the middle and a side porch. Wow. And then we'll get the other side for you. And this is the other side, guys, right. of that house. Like I said, they own all of that. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. All right, let's carry on. Okay, guys, number 29 on our map is the First United Methodist Church. Parts of this building are believed to date from the 1889 when the church was erected by James E. Lee, a pioneer from Dawson, Georgia, who came with his family by a covered wagon in 1881. And it goes all the way over there. And again, the holidays, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Church Street, I don't Christmas. Care what religion you are, these churches here are just phenomenal. Trying to get a little look at that. That is beautiful. Yes, it is. All right, number 30 on the list is the Gray Moss Inn. Built in 1910 in the Mediterranean Revival style, it claims to fame, its claim to fame as having hosted Calvin Coolidge for lunch and the only U.S. president to visit Pasco County. So, yep, Calvin Coolidge, the and if president. If I'm not mistaken, President Teddy Roosevelt stayed at the Edwinola. Right. Yes. So. Yep. <laughs> now it's just a boarding house, a uh, one room boarding house. Mm -hmm. Number 31 on the map, built in 1898, was the residence of Catherine McIntosh, the society editor of the Date City Banner. Sweet. And it's for sale. Yep. It's for sale, guys. Okay. Okay, everybody. Number 32 on the map is the McCutcheon, McCutcheon home. Built in 1910. And to let you guys know, on the map, it's incorrect. Yes, it's showing that it's the waterworks building. But right, it is not. but it's not. That's the waterworks. That's number what, BB? That is number 33. All right, 33 for Dade City Waterworks. Built by the city in 1924, it was the first public water system in Pasco County. Here we go. And it's still the Waterworks building today. <laughs> it's amazing how things... Some things just don't change. Yep. And this goes all the way back here. Yeah. That is crazy. Very historic. Number 34 on the map is the American Legion Hall, built in 1919. It has always been a meeting hall. Post 15, meeting second Monday each month. 7 p.m. Meets Tuesday at noon, and that's the Kiwanis. Right. And then that's the, the whole building right there, guys. All right, everybody, our last home on the tour, number 35, is the Ward Home, built in 1889 and was recently renovated, and it was. It was getting pretty, it was falling apart pretty bad. New people bought it and has renovated the home. And it's a hotel, I mean, not a hotel, uh, apartment. Yeah. Turned this into an apartment. And then right down there is the Chamber of Commerce where we all started. Okay. Now, so, so how many miles? are you showing so far i don't know i'll tell you in a minute and this is this side of it here 1.7 okay and let's go to that historic thing yep and this here as of 9th street to i think it's 21st street yeah is church street is the historic part national historic thing. yeah because you'll see the sign over there and now you're leaving. So, we did it. So, this is what part of the 
part of my little town looks like. <laughs> you, Fun. Yeah. How many miles so, we did? Did 1. you say? 1.7. Yeah, 1.7 miles we walked. It's a nice, beautiful walking tour, and there's more houses here than just oh, those yeah. as you're walking. These but are just these the historic ones, ones that yeah. uh, that really stand out, where people were famous or popular right. at the time. Yeah, like stuff, the so. Evans that own the Evans Citrus. Yeah. You know the Larkins. Same with them; they own Citrus. Um, our doctors, our very small doctors, um, like the original hospital when I was first moved to Florida is now the sh part of the sheriff's department um, but this is where I grew up between day cities up for hills and I love my little towns so our next video now you see why they're trying to stop construction in this town yeah there's too much subdivisions are being built they're trying to stop it because this is what they don't want to lose so no because they keep taking everything yeah that's historic so our next video that much our next video. We <laughs> see ya.